Let's see how to improve the ways we use function in C-sharp. At the start of our script we have some basic variables that we're gonna use later on. We'll start with the most basic thing, overloads. Instead of calling all the damage functions in different names, we can just rename all of them to the same name and when we call it with different variables the compiler will know which one to call according to the values we pass to it. Remember that you won't be able to use this if you are using two functions with the same number of variables and the same types. You can't use double float or int to indicate which function it is but I really recommend not doing this. Except if you are doing a function to doing something like parsing. A good example for use case for overloads is the instantiate function in Unity. You can call this function in different ways to get different results. We're still stuck with the problem that we have a lot of functions, but we have a way to solve this using default parameters. Here we have two functions that basically do the same thing, but one changes the size and the other one don't. Because we know that the default size will be 1, we can say size equals to 1 as a default parameter. Now we can delete the first function and if we call this function with one variable the size will be 1 and if we just overwrite the size it will be the number that we put to it. This is a great way to call functions and change variables only if you need to and when you need to. If you don't already know, the two string function get a string variable that represents the format that we want to output. But if you don't put anything in two string like we normally do, the default value is gonna be an empty string and anything else is gonna overwrite this. But what if we don't know how many elements we will get in the function and we want to be ready for all of them? Like for this example we have a function for every use case. And we still have more that we didn't cover. So as we can see the overloads and default parameters are not really helpful here. That is why we need to use params. Params gives you the ability to put any number of objects you want in the end of the function and then it combines them to an array that you can use inside the function. Now we can remove the functions that we created before and we don't only cover those cases we can cover any case from zero values to infinity. The best example for this is the math.max function. You can put any number of values you want inside and it will return the maximum one. Two important things here. First of all, of course all the objects need to be in the same type to be in the array. And second of all, you can make a function with normal values and params but you can only use one params and it has to be in the end of the function. Lambda expressions are something really big that we can have a full hour of tutorial on but now we'll focus on a basic function. Instead of having a block of code as your function, we can just declare a type func variable with the types of value that we want to send to the function and in the end the type of value that we want to return from the function. Give it a name and use equals and now we can give names for the variables so we'll be able to use them and using the lambda operator we can return the value of the formula we created with those variables. Now anywhere in the code we can call this function like we call the normal function and get the values in return. It's not only a way to make your code more organized and readable, you can send this calc function as a func variable to any other class in your code and use it there as a normal function. Until now we found ways to expand on the basic function, but what if we want to return more than one variable from the function? Like in this example when we have two different functions, one for the player name and one for the player score. Using tuples we can put in the return value of the function more than one type and then when we return the value we can return more than one value. Now when we call the function in our code, to be able to use both of the variables, we will create a var variable and store the information inside it. Then in this example we can just use info.item1 and item2 to get the values. You can obviously have more than two values but it's just for the example. Ok, item1 and item2 is not really readable code. So in the function declaration, in the return types, we'll give them names. Just after each type, write the name. Then we can use item1 and item2 but we can also use it by the name. For us it's gonna be info.name and info.score. And if you're already talking about naming stuff for a more readable code, imagine this, you have a function with a lot of values and a lot of them are default values and you need to overwrite only some of them. And here we have a problem, we have to put everything in order and we have to put different value for stuff even if we don't need to. And we already have names in the function variables, so let's use them. Just write the name of the variable, a semicolon, and the value you want to pass to it. The cool thing is that we can change the order and not call values if we want to use the different value. And it's really dynamic and can help us create a more readable code with no useless data. But if we have variables with no different value, we have to call them, but still the order doesn't matter. As you can see there are some things that didn't manage to get into this video so stay subscribed to catch up the next video about the extra stuff you need to know about functions. See you there, bye!